What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for Whiteout on Void Launch. Brian, let's hear the mutation. Void Launch is the map where we have to shoot down Naemon's shuttles. There are seven waves of shuttles which increase in size, number of prongs, and escorts. We cannot let more than four shuttles escape, otherwise we lose the game. Storm clouds move across the map. Your units are slowed when they get caught within. Resource harvesting is severely reduced, but you can pick up resources scattered on the map. Uh, how will we wreck? The commanders today basically this is uh a tier list of how much you can do with no money so yeah with the least amount of money kind of so yeah if you have a hero commander you're gonna do a lot you're gonna get a higher rank because you're gonna just walk around killing things and collecting more money to build up an army to assist your super powerful units for me it's a little bit more than that so aside from the low economy game that you alluded to I also considered a bit of Blizzard here because most commanders have an option for that, but it's that is I decided to have it as a factor anyway, because some commanders aren't really that great at fighting it. I mean, some commanders are way better than others in dealing with Blizzard. And one more thing, I always mentioned Void Launch being a, basically a one-wave map, so I've actually factored in the last wave as one of the things to consider when ranking the commanders. So let's begin. Abathur, where do we have him? So. Abathur, once you get some Brutalists, and yeah, after you get like two Brutalists, you're just fine because the enemies aren't stronger. You can deep tunnel out of the blizzards. You don't really need money. So yeah, you don't need money for much uh, except for like static defense maybe. You'll have a lot of minerals so you can build like spines and stuff at home. Uh, one thing about Abathur is that if you get the deep tunnel and your roach is burrowed, you just out heal the blizzard. So you can collect money while you're burrowed and your roaches are walking around or burrowing around. That's really cool. I put Abathur in A. Same. I put Abathur in A. He's pretty effective in low economy. He's pretty effective in blizzard. He's pretty effective against the last wave. I did not put him in S because for me, for me, I would put guys here in S if they decide not to collect a single resource pickup in the game and they would still e easily beat it. Abathur can still beat it without pick picking up a single resource but it'll be a bit tricky. It needs to work. So for me it's A. Prestige wise I think no prestige is fine and the second prestige I don't recommend it because it just makes your your, Levi your Leviathus more expensive or your areas more expensive and you I think you prefer area here to swarm hosts so I think no prestige is the best here. What do you think? Uh, yeah, there's really no reason to use Swarm Hosts here because they're just slow. Agreed. Like, you, 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 they're going to get stuck in the blizzards. You want Devourers or something to kill the shuttles anyways. Agreed. Let's move on. For me, Alarak is B. Uh, I could be convinced toward A, but I think he's more B because I think he's fine in low economy because he just need to really get, the, get out your mothership. But he kind of does not really excel at it, so I give him like half a point. And then I took out another half point on the last wave because he kind of needs to be in several different places. And yes, he can put down pylons, but it's still not a guarantee that you can teleport to that pylon or that pylon still being alive by the time you finish off one wave of the quadruple prong last wave, teleport to that next area. He's still fine, but kind of half point, half point from that. So that's still a collective two out of three. So that's still B for me. What do you think? I, I think he's actually really good for the last wave because you can empower me. You have 50 seconds to kill everything. And you just, you actually don't need to kill 10 shuttles. You just need to kill six. If, unless you have left some. Yeah. Like, if you have left some. Assuming before, you haven't left. You more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If none of them have left, then you just need six. So it's either going to be a V shape or the one on the sides. So if it's a V shape, you just kill the middle. And if it's the one on the sides, you kill the left, the right side, and then teleport to the left side and let the middle middle ones go. You don't engage the center wave. Yeah. But that said, you, uh, to get to that point, uh, Alarak himself is not that great because uh, he needs an army to like keep him alive and that army has to keep dodging blizzards. Mothership can teleport him out of trouble, but uh, if sometimes like if you just used it, you have to like walk out back. You have to fly or walk back yeah. from the base, which can be far. I also put him in B. Okay. For, yeah. for me, I personally thought blizzard wasn't that big of a deal because he can just kind of crawl along the sides where the blizzards start to dissipate a bit. I guess it's kind of hairy on the fifth shuttle wave, the one with the three prongs sent toward the center. I guess that's a little shaky, but you can always just kind of crawl your way there and then just teleport back after the wave. But I get your point. It can be annoying when your stuff moves at different speeds. And for example, a, a, a Wrathwalker or a Destroyer 
get caught in the blizzard and then your army's not all together and it gets easily destroyed or at least is a little less tanky. So I can get I, I can see what you mean. But either way, we can agree on B. So let's put it in B. He has one prestige here, Shadow of Death. Do you agree? Yeah, you need the mothership. You, you want it. absolutely need it for the early game and I think a lot of the... Well, entering the mid game, I think. So let's put him in B. Arcturus? Arcturus, for me, is interesting. I think he can perform okay in low economy because he will get the mandate from the blimps. So he can kind of just get more troopers by just dropping them out of the sky instead of, you know, well, at least buying them for mandate instead of buying them with minerals. He still needs extra money to afford the guns, which is why I don't really think he excels in low eco uh, or in low econ games. So I only gave him like half a point there. And I took away another half point because he's fine in Blizzard, but the damage piles up over time and it obviously makes him less, his bunkers less effective against the waves when they pit particularly hard and even more particularly when a Blizzard just happens to pass by through your bunkers while the attack wave is hitting them. So that rounds out to half a point, half a point. That's a two out of three combined. So that's B for me. What do you think? Uh, the His best source of like low, uh, like uh, cost efficient damage is his ESOs, but they don't hit air. So yeah, you can't them. kill the objectives and you can kill most of the waves if you get enough, but it costs so much. It costs so much to get enough ESOs to do like ser enough damage that I actually think he's one of the worst commanders. He's not like D, not that bad. Bad, but then he's he really relies on economy and he doesn't have any good units to collect money with like true. a hero unit you just basically collect what's near your base and that's, that's true like unless you like micro an SEV in the center or on the sides it's a lot of extra work just to get enough money to afford stuff and p3 if you're losing troopers and stuff then you're gonna you're gonna run out of money so you can't just like drop a bunker arm the dudes and kill a wave like you normally could uh if your contaminated strikes are off then you're also gonna miss a lot of you're gonna like not deal much damage it's, it's gonna be a waste of mandate so i actually put him in c because he mm. relies so much on the economy i think we usually consider proper play here so i think you're, you you should be able to determine the direction of most of the waves in void launch especially the the yes. big ones the 90 minute wave and the last wave you can kind of hit them with the contaminated strike making you only need to deal with the ships wouldn't that at least lift them up a bit not have to trade so uh, many guys. You're gonna need to keep your Sky Furies alive against the ships. And depending on what the enemy is, that's not always easy. And if a blizzard's flying in your direction, while that's happening, that's also problematic. So it's like you have to know that you have to do the timing while you're trying to keep the Sky Furies alive. It's really hard. Why not just use Pride of Augsburg then? I mean, I know it's really expensive. I know it's really expensive, no, but like. You, you can't afford it until mid game. So you get. I, I got a Pride of Augsburg later, but then like, what do you do about the first? like three waves the green, gu so the green guns something. the green guns in the bunker uh, it's not, it's not it's enough it's not strong enough mm, um, alright then if you say so then that's yeah okay I'm okay with C if it, it really is not strong enough you want the third prestige yeah. here no I, I think that you still use the, f the first one the first one gives you mandates oh, okay also remember remember that if you're not saturating your base like you normally do then your blimp actually gives you less mandate than usual mm -hmm. since some people don't build workers because of slim pickings that's true so if you don't build workers you actually get less mandate than usual so p1 actually is i think it's better but it's still not that good it's better By the but way, it's not that good speaking of getting expansions do you recommend getting expansion here for arcturus for me I, it it depends on the commander whether the expansion is worthwhile or not for example if you have a guy like abathur you don't really need an expansion you just need ultimate evolutions if you have someone like Alarak, you probably want at least some guys like Destroyer or Wrathwalker. So if you can overcharge a Paladin early, it's, it is worthwhile. For Taurus, I think it is worthwhile if you just drop the bunker right away. Because the harvesting rate for the expansion is slower. But if you're Arcturus, you can just get the, ex the enlistment center really early. I think it's still worthwhile to get the expansion, don't you think? Uh, I always get expansion if I need the gas. I don't get it for the minerals. That's true. So you just saturate the gas and kind of forget about the minerals? Yeah, I have like a few extra dudes on minerals because I just happen to overbuild. That makes sense. So you do it for every commander who needs who needs gas. Uh, who needs gas, yes. Alright, so... I, if I remember. 
So you get it for our trust yeah. because you build Skyforce. Uh, yes, and like Pride of August grad and ESOs all need gas. It's true. So I, I, I built the expansion. Plus, you want extra in seat command centers anyways. That's true, so, so yeah. you can drop more guys. All right, let's put them in seat. I use P1, but I use P1, but I think P3 is fine. Ar Artanis, where do we have him? So Artanis, he's actually, uh, he can actually hold on quite a long time with just his top bar if you know how to time it and if you know like where the waves are coming from. If you're in the UI, like the top bar UI, you might not know which direction like the 730 wave is going. That can be a little, bit, little problematic, although I use Solar Bombardment for that one, so I don't think it matters too much. But uh, later on, some people get Dragoons. You can get Dragoons, you can get Tempests. I think Tempests are easier to use because you just stay at home. And when they get close, you poke your head out, you kill the shuttles, and then you go back in or go back to your hiding place. You don't have to worry about like dodging blizzards. And you can like warp in a Zealot and collect lots of money That's once in true. a while. I put Artanis in B. Actually, I actually have Artanis in C because I think he, he can only kind of do the blizzard dodging thing because my, my line of thinking here is just use phoenixes to fly around and sight the shuttles and then for defense just use Archon dudes and just catch the waves as they go up your ramp but I think it's fine until you get to the last wave where the phoenixes just might get whittled down by all the things shooting at them even when shield overcharge. Mm. I don't think phoenixes are good. <laughs> yeah, but for me, for me, just the ability to, to make the blizzard not a thing. And to, to be a bit frank, I just don't I just don't see a lot of use for phoenixes. I mean, aside from clearing magmites, of course. But anytime I, I get the chance to justify phoenixes, I will take it. Because it's a rarely used unit and Mass Dragoon often feels monotonous for a Tannis. But I see what you, but I see your point. So if you're if you're saying you're gonna mass Tempest here and just kinda poke your head out when the shuttles are close and that's good enough for B, I'm still not yeah. fully convinced that you'd get enough gas for that. Um let's see. Uh by the end of the game I had eleven temp no I had like thirteen tempests. Thirteen tempests. That's seventy six. I think I'm more. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh seventy eight. Maybe I had more but I lost some. I don't remember. But I I um I actually ended the game with uh seventy something energy, which means I had one more archon drop that I didn't use because uh, I thought I needed it or I thought I would need it somewhere else, but I didn't. So it? I could have. What was the enemy comp, or did it matter? Uh, I don't think it matters too much. But if you're doing the poking your head out, your archon dudes are gonna kill the whole wave anyways, and then your tempest will finish whatever's left. And you also get detection, right? Because if it's Tehran, for example, there was yeah. some nukes. Yeah, you just Cannons. make one robo. Oh, robo. I'm just you just, you just siege siege an observer at the i'd rather i'd personally rather make haddens so you, you don't have to divert gas away from tempest production if that's your strategy because robo costs 100, 100 gas observer costs 75 each so that's 250 which is easily one tempest but uh, okay either way like you, you could. yeah okay uh if you say he's I, good enough i i think that it does depend on how well you like uh collect money no, because I don't. if you don't collect money you're not gonna have enough stuff i usually tunnel so... vision on actually fighting the map when it, when i enter the mid game i just kind of forget all about resource collecting until i look at the map and say oh wait there's so much stuff there and then i scramble this, i don't think that's good this, enough this map is like uh there's a lot of downtime so the downtime is when you go around and collect money especially with like tempest you don't really dodge blizzards you just shoot and then go back home and you, while you're oh. waiting your dudes i do try to dodge blizzards. Grab money. <laughs> i do try to dodge blizzards kind of ball them up and then just, just kind of fly them around the dead blizzard so you, you, it's, be it's better to just fly them through the blizzard, take their damage. Meanwhile, we have a Zalot flying or running around trying to get the gas for the Tempest. Yeah. Mm. I also have a, there's a, there's a good spot on the right side of the map where you can keep a probe and then collect any money that goes there because the blizzard doesn't go there. Yeah. The blizzards don't go there. Le so you can actually get more money. The right side, a little more. the right side has, has like a little area where the blizzards don't really, or kind of don't really deal damage. That's pretty, it's pretty nice. Uh, still not sure about B, but if you say I'm not really strong on the B, just because I don't think people can do all the things that I had to do. So, I mean, like yeah, I'm the, comparing the him... keep, keep track of everything plus knowing what to do and using the call downs at the right times. I'm comparing so him like... to Ar uh, to Arcturus. I don't think he's uh, like a whole tier stronger. Do you think that's he's true. a whole tier stronger yeah. than Arcturus? No, not really. Not really. Okay, so that's no. C. Okay. C. I think he does his job, so I think. Okay. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, he does his. I don't think anyone's worse than C, but yeah, he does his side. I think that's all right. Okay. Let's put no, it on 
because oh, because he gets run over but he gets wrecked by certain enemy comps like that bailing scourge if they have like mass air anti-air or if they have like if they have like immortals against your dragoons that's also not good yeah, if, if they have immortals you just you should just go straight to air <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah. so that's C for Tannis. Prestige wise, you want to use Archip Commandant to get the Archon dudes and the better shield overcharge. Moving on, the Haka, where do we have him? He doesn't need money, really. He just needs enough to get the three pack leader dens, and then you can like survive until like 20 minutes with just those. Just the Haka plus pack leaders. The pack leaders. And then yeah. you'll slowly like mass mutalists, and oh. whatever mutalists you get will help you in the last wave. But the pack leaders themselves will do most of the work. So I put him in S. I actually was thinking creeper hosts, but mutalists are also mutalists are also good. My only concern with mutalists is if you if you lose them. I guess yeah, he get this they got a second life but uh, kind of iffy on flying them through the the blizzards whereas locusts if you use just just another round although the concern the is there that they might get caught in the blizzard and not reach the target yes. so that's true yes that's worse than mutilus i think mm. i think because the a. mutilus they're always the mutilus are always with your dahaka so you're always looking at the screen you don't like when you make new mutilisks then you just uh you might have right -click to them across. press like put them on number one instead of f2 and then later join them together but then like your mutilus are gonna be flying you're gonna be paying attention a lot whereas if you use creeper hosts you're gonna shoot them if you don't look if you don't manually control them they'll get caught in blizzards and do nothing okay that makes sense then you have to look away but from where you're focusing uh, i i see i see I see your point for Mulus. I'm, but remember what I said earlier that if he, the way I would put a guy in S is if he easily beats this without pick up a single mineral or why? gas pickup. Why does he not have to pick up minerals though? That I don't know why that's a factor though. I mean, it's just like, it's just uh, it's just what I just kind of an internal uh, an internal benchmark I have to make someone like it's, really S tier. It's a strange. It's it's like a it's it's impra It's an impractical benchmark because no one's not, not picking gonna up. Do anything. And the Haka, well, the Haka also like uh, he can walk around at one minute. He's gonna do a lot of stuff. He's gonna pick up minerals just from existing because he's walking around all the time. That's true. Mm, so. You well, have money. well, my benchmark, well, my benchmark is largely based on I can't really, I can't really determine, a, whether players will be really good at being attentive to picking up crystals, and b, I can't really determine either how lucky people are, especially knowing my luck that I never, I never get luck. You, you guys watching have seen this. Like I walk, I run probes around, run drones around, and I never come across gas pickups. Whereas my ally gets like five of them in a row. I was like, where, where's all this gas coming from? I can't find any gas. Turns out my ally got all of them. But maybe it's just me. So I kind of I kind of just made that. It's true, it's arbitrary. But, you know, it, it sometimes happens. And basically, an S, an S guy would be immune to that kind of RNG factor. That's why, even though it sounds arbitrary, uh, I'm just explaining my, my point of view. But if, if you don't think it's worthwhile, that eventually, eventually you'll come across in pickups. So that's also like, fair. He, that's also he fair. He only needs enough for the pack leader dens. It's not like he needs to build, he doesn't have to build like a huge army with his money. He's going to get money eventually. So I don't see why like he has to like not pick up anything. Because even if you have bad luck, you're going to get yeah, enough for pack leader dens. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of. Uh, what I'm what I'm saying earlier that uh, if you're saying that regardless of how bad your RNG is, you will always at some point come across enough gas to get your pack leaders out and get like a few units at le or at, uh, at least some units to help fight the last wave. Uh, okay, if uh, if you if you're really strong on Dhaka being an S, then. Um, he doesn't care about what enemies he can jump. He himself jumps out of blizzards. He won't die if he stands in a blizzard. My big concern is so, uh, what if you? What if you're really if you really drop the ball and not collect pickups, and you only have like two mutilisks, mutilisks against the last wave? Will the pla will the pack leaders themselves be enough? You you should have like you can glevic two of them and then mervar one of them and then they'll still die, right? Just figure out which ones can... are the the, tr the three the three shuttle spawns. Okay, okay. If yeah. you say that, if you say so, let's put them in S. Uh, you want the second one for this one, or do you want yeah, no the prestige? second one? Phoenix for me is. Hmm, I think he only really can do the the blizzard dodging thing because with the second prestige, actually it's not. I give him like a half point for dodging blizzards because you only need to control like singular units to get across the map. But it's not even that great because when your main army lose only one unit, you still need to just kind of a move 
that one guy, that one champion from your base where the shells are to the front where your other champions are. But the half point, I guess, comes from if you can just summon a phoenix suit uh, during a wave, you can usually clear it because the waves aren't that, str aren't, that, aren't that stronger. And they give him like another half point, I think, for the last wave because the Dragoon suit is still pretty good. He can just kind of wait around in the in the shuttle exits to teleport your army using the Arbiter suit. But it's not that great. So again, I gave him half a point there. So for me, he's, he's C. W what do you think? Uh, I don't think you should use P2 because you should use P1. So a Dragoon suit just dragoon suit? completely destroys shuttle waves. Like, uh, it's so strong. You can destroy the attack wave and the shuttle waves together. And then you don't actually really, like, lose... You don't need much army for anything until, like, after 15 minutes. So after before 15 that, minutes. it's just suits. You, oh. you, I, so you slowly build up carriers and Caldalus. Uh, so, so, like, you're, you have minerals. So you can get, like, Talus and other champions, just one of them. And then the rest will just be carriers. And then for the last wave, if you're just a carrier, <laughs> carrier and dragoon suit, and things die. So I I put Phoenix in A, but not a strong A. I don't actually buy that. Uh, what enemy comp are you fighting? The classic infantry. So oh. the suits will do a lot of damage. If you don't have like if you have a if you fight a stronger one, then yeah, you would probably just kill the ground stuff and then fight the rest of the units at home. Yes, where where your where your uh, army is, where you're where you're backing your army. Mm. Yeah, but my army is usually on the field, so it's like. Like, on the field i have mm. uh, yeah my, my army's not it's not they're not tempest they can move so i'm like dodging blizzards but at the same time i'm collecting money so wouldn't it be painful guess, if you lost your interceptors to a blizzard because it takes very long to replenish them i guess but uh i don't know but i don't know what pe people do but i look at the mini map so i can see when the blizzards are going to come at me so if you look at the mini map you can see where the blizzards are coming so you can just move down if there's like nothing there and then move back up so yeah i i don't get caught in blizzards a lot unless i'm like really really busy and then arbiter suit allows you to like teleport anywhere plus it's stronger and you can cloak your army if you need to it's not good this with i would it's not i would like if you say he's b i think that's all right because i'm not really like it's not a strong a, but I think he can do a lot with P1. Yeah, I, I can, I can see the case gets... with the first prestige because the Jaguza is really strong. I was just thinking of, uh, I was just thinking of the second prestige because you could just send your champions to kind of, to kind of partially counteract the low economy game. But with the first prestige, you could kind of almost fully counteract that. So uh, I'm guessing that you just send like individual probes around to collect your money on the center of the map, uh, and you just have a patrol, patrol near the bases. I, um, I have three probes on hot keys usually really? so one for the left side one for the right side and one for the very right side the the, the like near the, the right the dead spot of the, the dead spot of the yeah. the blizzards yeah exactly so i have three probes collecting money usually and uh yeah and then i have some patrolling but they don't really do anything like they're more to die. get vision than to actually kill i mean not they're not there to collect they're just there to get vision i guess b is fine although kind of concerned about air air-based attack waves for example if you get sky Terran or reaper liberator or uh, Bailey screws. I I suppose, which is I guess why B makes sense. I guess, yeah. His... I guess B does make sense. All right, let's put him in B. First prestige, right? I think the first prestige is better, especially since Caldalus is a lot less effective here. Okay, let's put Phoenix in B. Han and Horner, where do I have him? Han and Horner needs money to do a lot of stuff. So Han and Horner has great top bars to deal damage repeatedly without losing your units. However, to kill the shuttles, you'll need like Horner units, and those are expensive. Expensive. Those are expensive. So, yeah, I just put Han Horner in C. Mm, yeah, pretty much. I was thinking of, uh, yeah, low economy. Yeah, Han and Horner. Ah, oh, yeah, I gave Han and Horner actually half a point low economy because he does help his ally by providing salvage for lost units. So I gave him half a point there. I think I also gave him a point or gave him a point against the last wave because they can use magmines. By that point, they should have at least a couple of wraiths with teleport, maybe a, co a couple of battle cruisers to just snipe the air. But it's only only still like 1.5 points which is kind of just rounded up B but if you're rounding them to C I'm also okay with that it's just kind of between B and C for me if you're saying C you don't really have anything against that so okay uh first prestige or second prestige which one do you prefer here second is better second because you want more horn units you're not gonna mass scallions anyways yeah. and you're not gonna mass Han units the, the, the only thing I th the only thing I'm 
putting in advance or in the first prestigious advantage is that your magmines will have a higher likelihood of actually connecting when they yeah. are deployed right before the things are supposed if, to hit. But yeah, second prestige is fine. If you use magmines to hit the shuttles to try to kill them, which you can, then P1 is better. Otherwise, you just deploy the magmines at home to fight off waves. Yeah. Okay. Or when when there's no blizzard, you can spawn camp the the, the spawn point where like if you can if you see no blizzards are gonna come for a bit, you can dump some magmines there. Okay. So Karax, Karax, I believe was the first real. This is the first mutation back in 2016 where Karax really became a popular one to use against the hard mutations when Stukov or the last the la the latter half of commanders weren't around yet because Karax just camps like the center of the low ground with rows of cadence, monoliths, shield batteries, energizers, and just have them ha have a probe or two collecting the pickups. He does fine, or at least sufficiently fine, against all mutators to kind of just survive. However, I'm not entirely sure if that's S, because I'm looking at the guys I have in S, and thinking, Karak is really good, but is he these guys level? And if you don't collect pickups, or at least not not enough pickups you might still struggle or if you don't have, do if you don't have an ally who's helping collect pickups you might struggle so i'm i initially had him an s but like i i when as i was putting together my list i was like i think he belongs more like an a tier so i did put him in a tier but what do you think um if you don't have enough stuff then you'll die to immortals oh yeah and those <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I I didn't think about camping the center because I don't like blizzards. So yeah. I guess you I guess you could, but I didn't do that. I just camped at home and then get mirages, use spear of a dune to kill the shuttles, and then fly back home when it's yeah when it's when everything is done. You just have some cannons at home defending, and then uh, let me tell you now mirages. that is not how that is not how ninety eight percent of Karak's players will play this mutation. <laughs> yeah, but pop Q doesn't count because they they're not seeing this. <laughs> So I mean even even those who watch this guys guys watching the guys watching this video comment right now if you're gonna use mass mirages as Karax or really just do the tower strategy as Karax comment down below I'm interested to see what you guys will actually go for <laughs> okay so uh with that said I still put him in A because repair beam is good <laughs> repair beam He's is really good. good isn't it <laughs> okay yeah I, I, at least we agree on that uh do we want the third prestige here third one is better because your probes can survive blizzard better yeah. and i think just having the safety backup of the spear of rune the more efficient spear of rune at least is i think a better help than like a chrono boost every five minutes which yeah does help a lot but i don't think it's gonna outweigh a big old soul lance and a big purifier beam every three minutes so i think Third prestige, Solarite Celestial is still better. So let's put him in A. Kerrigan, where do we have him? Kerrigan, once she comes out, you can just, you, she jumps around, she collects things, she kills pretty much everything. So I did hero only. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only small issue I have is that uh, you need to keep her alive. So yes. you have to heal her. You have to get, you have to keep her healed. Uh, I put her in A, All not, right. but I... First, let's just say A for now. I also actually initially put him in A. Like, I was thinking, yeah, Kerrigan's kind of... Because I already did this with Kerrigan, essentially hero solo. And what I did was just Omega Worms when she gets low, retreat, pop back home, transfuse, 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 and come back out. And then all your gas just goes to Worms, the tank, provide vision, and uh, provide transport for Kerrigan. And if you need the Queens for the last wave, you can do that too. The only reason I really, really, I really eventually put her in B is I was concerned about air waves. Even if you hit with the mobilization waves, like the, the Tempest guys, battle cruisers, might still be painful to deal with. So I think I'm just barely gonna put her in B. But again, not a strong B. If you say A, I have no objections against A. Oh, I was, I was going the other direction. I was thinking <laughs> she'd be S, but I dropped her to A. Oh, really? Huh. Because she's really good. <laughs> She That's doesn't true. like if you choose to spend your money on units instead of Omega Worm, she'd be you, she'd be even stronger. I just chose not to. Now, and really I think P2, like it's really good. So you stun them. So if they're you have some pesky air units, you shoot your own Omega Worm, then you slide at them, they're stunned for a bit. And you just chain them? Yeah. Okay. Uh okay. I put her in A. A is fine. Prestige wise, you want the second prestige here? Yes. Okay. Either that or the uh, zero. Because you want thinking, to be able to jump around. I was actually thinking the third prestige so you can get more money from a similar Aura. But fair enough. If no. you if you if you no. if you You'll get, get more money faster, from jumping around, I mean not just getting money, but the, the consideration I have for not using the prestige is just being able to bypass or just moving around more quickly 
through the blizzards if you're if you ever get stuck in one so that's my consideration for using that anyway still a use no prestige or the second prestige let's move on nova for me is okay in low economy because your main units will be gas heavy so you 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 get maybe a sub raven sub liberators you don't need a whole lot here because the main objectives are air based anyway and to deal with waves you can still do the blinking and then blasting with nova and you can use liberators to augment that that firepower for the shuttles themselves you can kind of use you can kind of wait for them to bunch up near the exit and then just spam your seeker missiles or even use a uh, griffin airstrike which i think does have enough firepower destroy a shuttle or i think leave like one it hp or something so it's not Shuttles enough. Have 700. I thought it. I thought it did 700. Anyway, so yeah. So you kind of if you do if you do the if you do the airstrike, then you'll need to. Well, it, it don't, you will still need to use the the seeker missile, but at least don't need, you don't need to spam as many. You can like use three of them to eliminate an entire wave, just one Robin. So yeah, I think she's fine in low economy. Not great, but fine. Blizzard. You can just kind of blink around, but your army has that escape button. You can fly around the right edge of the map for those ones. You can just creep up the center for those ones and then just kind of crawl around to the left side for those ones last wave i think is also kind of hairy a little bit you have to kind of teleport or if you if you can maybe float buildings for vision so you can use the airlift to take those out either way i think it's not quite enough to be an a tier so i put her in b she's bad low economy but with uh in general low economy she's not good but with slim pickings she blinks around and just takes everything like she can grab so many resource things like the the mineral patches or not patches but the pickups those resource drops on the ground so easily and like in the middle in the mid game i was like i often had three thousand minerals just like ready for airstrikes so i could airstrike everything yeah. and uh i was just hoping to collect gas so i could get more liberators gas is the main but, constraining resource here but uh i i still like had my liberators uh i had like six by 15 minutes and then i still had like a lot of money i put her in eight because she she can be everywhere <laughs> Uh, for the for the airstrike, I'm mean, not airstrike, airlift. You can just dump an SCV at the expo, and since your units are air units, you just fly towards the conduit over the the ledge. Which or from the left side, there's no ledge, but you can just fly towards that gap. Whatever it is, you can just keep a unit at the natural so that you get vision instead of like in the middle of the map. How about the last wave? Last wave, uh, you only need to kill six. So if it's a uh, depending on which way, if it's the the right middle, left middle one, you kill the two sides so you kill one teleport to the other side kill it if it's the v then you just kill like the center the ones not at the center if it's there's early v and then there's late v there, uh so if it's a v the left side usually they will converge at some point the one that goes towards the left and the one that goes towards the middle they will converge near the third bonus and you kill them yeah. there and then you can teleport and kill the right side leaving three to go to the middle so it's like you, you don't have to kill all 10 of them i also so, forgot I, you can, I also actually forgot that you can nuke one of those which is probably one yes. of the better ways to deal with those i, I kind of forgot i, I kind of took away half a point for her for, for the last week i forgot oh yeah she has that nuke thing i forgot about that yeah i guess that does like give her an answer for that so i guess that does elevate her to a because the nuke is really good against the yeah. also the 19 the oh wait yeah. will you if you use the nuke at the 1930 wave will it be available again for the last wave it won't would it um if it's the uh, early v i used the nuke i didn't use the nuke for 19 i used it for 16 that makes sense the 1645 one okay so what because there are double shuttles. Yeah. So liberators on one and nuke on the other. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. All right, let's put an let's put an over an A. So you want soldier fortune here, right? Yes. Okay, let's put her in A. Rainer, where do we have him? Rainer's kind of like Artanis. Like, you can rely on the top bar for the early game if you know how to do it. Uh, if you don't, then you will not contribute much. So it's basically P3 Hyperion cooldown. You use the Hyperion for the at like seven minutes fifteen seven seven minute fifteen seconds to kill the first shuttle wave, so that before the second shuttle wave enters the conduit, you can kill it again, even if you have no extra air units. But by that time, you should have some. Uh, I tried Banshee Viking first, and it's just so bad. Battle cruisers are just so much better. Just go straight so, to battle cruisers. Yeah, just slowly amass battle cruisers, and by the 
mid game, you should be able to have Hyperion like for every shuttle wave. So you can like at least deal with two or three of the shuttles easily. I put Rainer same as Artanis, so it's C. Yeah, I also have Rainer same as Artanis. I don't think he's that great with the economy, but like he gets by by just not losing stuff when you get when you get mass ba ba mass battle cruisers. Blizzard, I think he's terrible for Blizzard to be honest, because well, unless you use battle cruisers, because most of your army has to fly through it. But with Blizzard with with battle cruisers, you just kinda not do that. Last wave, yeah, he's not great against either. So like that's like uh, so it's like 1.5 points for him, which I get again I ran I rounded down to C. So yeah, that puts him in C. Step boy. Uh I actually initially had him in A. I don't think he's S here for this one. Although uh, although you can cut you can just kind of fly corruptors around the edges. I think it'll be annoying when your stellites keep getting disabled. So I took away a point from Blizzard because Super Guy will be super slow when he needs to go, for example, to the center to the center exit for the shuttles, but the satellite there is disabled because a Blizzard flew through it. Or you need to move to different edges, but again, satellites are disabled because of Blizzard, so I didn't give points there. But he's fine for low economy because Super Gary, all you need to get is Super Gary, and you'll essentially be fine. Last wave, he's still Super Gary, so he's still super fine. But yeah, I just can't give him a point for Blizzard, which I only put him in B. What do you think? B? Yeah, B? Actually, yeah, B. Really? Yeah. He's. I, I don't know how he gets stuck in Blizzard. I mean, like, you'll. Because you don't Blizzard's need fly through the, the Blizzard satellites. Fly through the satellites. You still have some in your disposal. Like, you're gonna. You can still, like, spread satellites to where it's disabled to continue your path, like, to move forward. You can overcharge the satellites so that they don't get killed by a Blizzard. You can also have Gary Zone, which its cooldown is, like, what, one minute? Whereas you only fight waves every, like, three minutes. So you pretty much have a Gary Zone all the time. He doesn't collect money. So that's his. That's a small problem, but his slings don't care that much. Although if you yeah, like, it's kind of like if you lose them, you lose them. But you probably rather not lose them. Uh, yeah, I don't remember having much trouble with him. I put him in S because he's he can kill all the waves by himself. I guess I should be so. using Gary Zone more frequently. I guess Gary Zone is how you get to those satellites that get disabled by Blizzard. Mm. Gary Zone exists. It's not P1. Although P1, his satellites won't go down, but Super Gary just will suck. Uh, he does. I mean, there is no Super Gary. Yeah, there's no Super Gary for the first prestige. The Zergans, oh, I, I don't oh, think... I, yeah? ah, what? ah, there it is. I did hero only, so I made no units. Uh, just so Super Gary. At all. Mm. If you say, if you say he can do it, well, if he, if he did... What, what, what enemy comp did you face for your hero solo? Disruptive Artillery. The Reaver Disruptor. I one. guess it doesn't really change much if it, it doesn't matter. That's, that's he, just, tankiest. he deletes it. He deletes it no matter what. How about the hybrids? Shot, How one many, or two shots. Really? You, you you kill the big fat hybrids in two shots? No, no, no. Uh, the regular enemies, and you just stall with like all all my money went to evolution chambers. <laughs> you just stall so, them indefinitely. Like they, I just put like I had like twenty evolution chambers. That's not more hero, than twenty. Only. Just that's hero and wall. <laughs> but okay, point taken. Oh, I I had so much money I couldn't build enough evolution chambers i just like yeah <laughs> the broodlings help out they damage the <laughs> the big fat guys <laughs> oh. it's hero only yeah it's basically you s I, blizzard is not a problem at all not at all. Gary Zone. I guess just I just have this habit. Of, everything. I, I, I guess I just have this habit of flying into blizzards where they really need to. I guess I was. I guess yeah. I, I, I caught a tunnel vision on where I need to go, where I often don't see what I have to go through to get there. Or maybe maybe it's my graphic settings. I don't really see them that clearly enough. I should actually. He also has he also has teleport. So yeah, no, no. no. The, the thing the thing is, places. I did I didn't factor in the teleport to those spots because when the blizzards go through the the studlights, they will get disabled. That's why you can't teleport to a disabled. Like, that's why I didn't count it. But yeah, with 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 Gary Zone, you should actually be able to get there just fine. Uh, so I'm just now thinking whether whether he's S or A. I don't really see much of I don't really see much of anything preventing him from being A because the whole thing is the whole, my whole issue with him is getting to the spot where he used to be. And if he can do that, he's S. So I guess he's S. Uh, second prestige, right? Of course. All right, let's move on. Stukov, where do we have him? Stukov, slow, but eventually he'll kill things. Although you will need liberators later on, so you just P3. I mean, if you want to P one and mass liberators from the start that is fine but i think p3 is better because you will collect money as you Passively. walk through the center yeah yeah you just yeah eventually you just get enough liberators to just focus down the, the shuttles the shuttles i put stukov in a I actually had stukov in b because i maybe maybe i'm just really unlucky but the blizzards always just tear through my guys or i don't get enough i don't get enough pickups that i can't really get enough can't really get enough bunkers up or i either tunnel vision on building bunkers or 
or tunnel vision on collecting pickups. It's never seamlessly multitasking you, or switching between do you ever, tasks. Do you ever manually like click the, the infested to go collect stuff instead of using the side emitter? It's like they're 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 walking along and they're passing by some minerals, but then what I do is the side emitter's not there. What I do is I just like, build the bunkers different spots in the base, like one in my expansion, one in my allies' expansion, one in one in the main base. Well, yeah, but then like yeah, I mean you, you should do that I anyways. Don't it's usually just that. do that but yeah um, then, then you're gonna get a lot less money <laughs> I guess I guess I guess it's a skill issue for me because I can't I can't really I, 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 I can't really focus on while well, doing different things I can't really multitask that well I either tunnel vision on doing one thing or doing the other thing they kind of neglect doing the others so huh, huh. So, so it's no either shuttles. oh no I like this game huh? so it's either I I don't have enough money for bunkers or I'm flowing so much money because I'm not building bunkers because I'm f tunnel vision on, on building or on collecting pickups. So maybe, maybe it's a me problem, but I think he's more B. But I guess if most people are better than me at multitasking, then he is A. Mm. Yeah, that, I mean, it's usually like you look at your you look at your mineral count. If it has four digits, then it's time to do something. And then that's usually what I do. It's like, oh, I have, yeah. I have too much money. Let's do when let's I When I look it. at when I look at the mineral count, it's either close to zero or like 2,000. And when it, when it starts getting 2,000, I just have to build stuff. And then I have to summon the... Alexander, and then they have to move inside side meter, and then oh no, I'm broke again. Uh, hmm. Okay, I'm not. I'm not really sure about this. Uh, if you insist on A, then I can't really argue my position because I'm arguing for the position of, position of lack of skill, and that's a really good argument. So if you're saying it's A, then I guess I have to agree with A. Uh, yeah, I, I just think you just need to like dra drag some people away from the line that they're the path that they're going. I don't think no no, no that's stuff. not that's not the issue. That's not that's not my issue. My issue is when I'm building bunkers, I completely neglect because remember, uh, when you have ADHD, you really tend to hyper focus on things that you're currently doing and completely forget the things that you're not doing. So when you're hyper focusing on collecting pickups, you completely forget that you also have to be able to build bunkers. And when you're hyper focused on building bunkers and doing the map, you completely forget about gathering the pickups. So you never have a good ba healthy balance of steadily growing your army, your your base, and you either just have a unhealthy float or you have an unhel or unhealthy lack of broke or unhealthy lack of money. What like if I could if I could easily just remember to send individual infested to the pickups, then I could also just easily send SCVs there. I don't think the problem is choosing to select the infested. The problem for me is noticing that I need to send an infested to the pickup. Does, does that make sense? Uh, I'm not sure why that is, though. I mean, <laughs> it's called a mental disorder. You've played this, <laughs> it kind of just happens. You've played this a lot, so you kind of like this game. It's like everything's yeah, like second nature by this point, right? Yeah, I know, but uh, <laughs> when, when well, I, it's yeah, it's kind of second nature what, when that, you're when your mineral harvesting this, is. Wouldn't that be a problem for like every commander then? So you would like rank every commander lower because of that? I ranked Rainer and Artanis very low. Like I put them in C. I put I put basically hero commanders near the top uh, because I don't really need them to collect that much money after I get their upgrades. But guys, I, I, yeah, look, Phoenix. I initially put Phoenix in C because he's, he's an economy-based commander. See, I, I've been playing this game for a while, for a very long time, but in 99% of my games, the mineral harvesting is done passively. The, the way slim pickings works and what I really, really hate is because it makes you do your mineral harvesting manually and that adds a task that you have to multitask and that's something I'm just not good at. So even though, even though, uh, yes, you're correct, I've been playing this a while, things like slim pickings present a unique unique challenge for me because yeah i i tend to tunnel vision a lot like it doesn't really matter on void rips because yeah i, I know void rips are also a multitasking mutation but you get a notification you get a ping you get certain timestamps where you ah i need to go snipe those void rips. and after you finish them you can go back to your other to your other tasks that you have to do but with slim pickings there's no there's no reminder there's no time marker that you have to go out and collect the pickups you just kind of have to remember, remember to pick up the pickups. And that's kind of the, the straighting part for, you know, me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if, if, you, if you don't think that's really an issue for most people, then okay, I, can't, I guess I can't really argue uh, my position. So I have, to, I have to concede to A. All right.
Okay, <laughs> let's put him in A. Swan, I... Again, he's another he's another economy based commander. But the thing here is, I do the basically I do basically the passive cac strategy of just static defense of rows of turrets where the shuttles will try to escape. And when the big waves arrive, I just use a concentrated beam or a pulse cannon to shoot down the waves that try to get at me. And if there are stuff like siege tanks, devourers, or Doris guardians shooting from a distance, I just fly a factory and then just, just laser them down. So for me, that's good enough for A. I'm not sure if that's good enough for S because mm. the thing here is when you get the fire suppression systems upgrade, it's basically auto heal, which will allow you to outlive Blizzard. But is that S? What do you think? I don't think it's S. No way. It's just he, he's not S. But I put him in B. But you did actually, put him in B. Now that I think of it, uh, now that I think about it, uh, I think A because he's like Carax. He's actually just like Carax. Yeah. Uh, the only character is immortal, I guess. I, I, I did not do the tower strat. I did uh, like you used to send one factor. I sent like five. five. I sent like five factories at them with P1. Well, I, P1 uh, and then, I need the money for towers. <laughs> uh, my towers. My towers have. 2000 HP, so I think that's better. But well, my towers uh, shoot fire. Your towers don't shoot fire. Mine has AOE though. <laughs> it's like a laser. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, no, no. I have, I have the same tower as you do. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, that's uh, And then you get rates eventually. Yeah, rates you don't are need good. That many towers. And then a P1 is good because you can slow them, slow the objective down from reaching the where they should go. I I think Swan can be an A. Yeah. Okay. Let's put him in A. I, I I think the second prestige is actually better here because if you just go for pure towers, then the economy, the, the more expensive use will not will not matter. And you just get better static defense, right? Or do you still prefer the first one? I think first one's still better. First one's still better. Uh, P because against random enemy, P1 doesn't really have a weakness, whereas P2 does. Okay, so use the first prestige. But but you you can pretty much choose. What, I don't think P2 is bad. I just think P1 is better. Yeah, I th I think I prefer to have like a concentrated beam and a pulse cannon against like when immortals arrive or when tempests arrive. Something That's to just true. wipe you, them out all at once. Work, yeah. Yeah. All right. So just use whichever you prefer. Either way, I think he's a Tychus. Where do you have him? He he walks around, collects money, and then eventually just you, you do whatever you normally do. <laughs> it's it's like hot and cold, but you're that was it hot and cold? Yeah, it was like hot and cold, but you're poor, but you don't really need money. So <laughs> rich over poor. Put him in I S. Yeah, I also put him in S. There's nothing much to discuss here. You play normally. Uh, resource collection isn't an issue because when you move your Tychus around, you just naturally correct resource collect resources with him. It doesn't tear your attention away to do that. So S. Vorzun for me, I actually put Vorzun in D. Maybe, maybe a bit shocking, but I think he's even more resource dependent than all of those guys in C because she needs a lot of gas to get her army up. I did encounter a, a Vorzun player who went mass stalker, but I don't think that's the norm. In fact, I think that's like a rare exception for a guy to make mass stalkers and, make a, and be effective with it. But I, I think because her, 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 her most powerful type top bar, the time stop, only summons Dark Templar or Shadow Guard which don't do damage against shuttles, so you still need to macro up an army large enough to, to down all those shuttles. So I don't think he's good in any of the mutators, or even the last wave. That's why I have her in D. Uh, clearly I'm wrong, because you said you don't have anyone below C, but what do you think? No, I'm actually reconsidering. <laughs> I, I think Vorsun's really bad. Uh, really bad for this one. I'm not actually sure. Uh, I only, I think I only beat it because it was Terran, which doesn't send detectors, and they were ground. So, like, the enemy is stronger. So, if it were any stronger enemy, I think it would be a lot harder, and I would not have eaten it as, like, as easily as it may have looked in my own run. Um, yeah, her, her, oh, and also cause Terran, uh, they don't send detectors with their waves. So your Corsairs can actually like kill the shuttles for free. Whereas if it's not Terran, they have stuff. So you have to either use a black hole, which you might, you don't want to use. You can't use it all the time. Like each time you don't You're have that much have energy. energy. Yeah. Yeah. And you also need enough Corsairs to actually deal enough damage. Yes. So if you're losing Corsairs in the mid game, painful. because like detectors. Very painful. Yeah. I think I'm not very strongly opposed to D. I think she is pretty bad. Yeah. She's pretty much my worst rated commander here. Uh, I'm, I, I, the guys I had, the, had, the guys I had in C at least had something that they could contribute. But Vorzun? Mm, yeah, low eco. No, she can't do anything against that blizzard. She can't really fly past the things. Last wave? No, no, not really. I guess time stop kind of helps, but not enough. You have to be a really good Vorzun player to be able to beat this. Again, with favorable conditions. So I think D is our best choice here. Uh, Zagara, what do you have? 
Sagara P3, not P1, it would be B because she gets basically it's hero unit, and then you Bio. all your money is spent on bio launchers because your bio launchers can hit the conduits yeah. from your base from yeah. a safe place. So you're like doing a, a weaker version of Carax or kind of Swan, or Swan, yeah. kind of. So all your resources are going to towers, and then you have some free banelings to deal with enemies at home, and Zagara herself can deal with quite a lot of stuff and pick up stuff. But then as the later waves get stronger you uh, you can't just kill them with the hero units so you have to like rely on other stuff and her army doesn't go through blizzards very well so you pretty much have to like fight at home yep. or like let or like uh, lure them to your bio launchers which doesn't always work unless you change the targeting of your bio launchers which is really annoying too I actually but got yeah, a miraculous hit on a, on a cloaked ghost I didn't have any detectors ready and they just had to target the bio launcher randomly to where the ghost I managed to hit it just before the nuke appeared so i just kind of saved myself there <laughs> what did you put her b. yeah same place as i did she's basically b for bio launcher that's where that's why she's b it's bio launchers all right zero tool um s tier for me <laughs> spin to win right demote the demote dude like kind of projection from your base if you can if you can get to that if you want to go units, the um, boosher is always good with their triple blinks. I'll also allows you to get past the the blizzards more quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah, Zeratul S tier, right? Uh, yeah. I think I I did a multi mutation on for this one where I added uh, two other mutations on top of this at, with no mining. So just the oh my goodness meme the meme. So it was well B plus seven. It's a B plus seven. Brutal plus seven. All right, Zeratul S. No mining. So yeah. So he can do that. Then he's S. Yes. Okay. So who's do we have a double S tier here? Mm, you still have to work. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, so who's to work. who's top of S? Zeratul. Zeratul. Then Tychus. Uh. Then. Tychus. I guess. Uh, and the Haka. And Stead Boy. Okay. Top of A. Oh. I think there's a strong case mm. for Karax. Yes. Or Abathur. Yes. Because Abathur can make you completely not even need the next another base. So. Uh, that's. Mm. But Karax top of That's A? a small. Karax is better than that. Okay. Karax. Then Swan or uh, mm. Kerrigan? Kerrigan. Kerry, almost. I, I, Kerr, I think almost feels like an S tier here. If he's only, if you only had better units. Mm -hmm. As long as you can keep her alive, don't let her die to because she's like too far away from an Omega Worm. Kerrigan's the entire then, commander. <laughs> yeah. So who's second? Kerrigan is pretty yeah? good. Yeah. So who, who do you think is second, Abathur or Kerrigan or someone else? Kerrigan. Kerrigan? All right. And then Abathur or Swan? Uh, wouldn't, it's Abathur or Swan because Swan is like weaker Karax here. Yeah. But not that much weaker. Slightly <laughs> weaker. Not Slightly that much weaker. weaker. I think Swan above Abathur. Okay. And then... Then Abathur, then... Uh, Stukov might be easier, actually. Stukov, then Nova. Stukov, then Nova. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look at my own rankings. I did have both of them in B. <laughs> but they got to A, so yeah, makes sense. B, top of B, I think, is Sagara? I think it's Sagara. Yeah. Sagara. Bio launchers are pretty good. And then Alarak. Then Alarak. And then, then Phoenix. Phoenix. There we go. Yeah, Phoenix was C for me. So it makes sense that he's only bottom of B. Top of C, Arcturus? Uh... Or Artanis. Oh. You you put you put Artanis in B, right? I did. So is he top uh, of C? I think he's with P three he's pretty good. I think he's better than the other three, yes. Okay, and then Arcturus next? I, I, oh wait. I I put Manx near the bottom because because his ESOs don't hit air. That's true. So it's like that is a fact. Whereas like Hyperion does. Second and C is can, hot and horner because they have refund. <laughs> they help uh, their allies. I think Rainer is second. Second and C? Mm. Huh, it's hard to say. Because I put Rainer and Artanis pretty much next to each other. Yeah, uh, I guess we call it a tie. It doesn't really matter to me. They're, they're C. It doesn't really matter to split hairs on this. Call whatever you want. I'll put them in a tie. They're first at the bottom of C. Then fours in D. There it is. Do we have pairs of commanders, B or below, who will be stronger than Stead Boy on his own? Hmm. Zagar or Tannis. There we go. Uh, well, <laughs> the, the I team. guess because you, you give the 100 killers guardian shell. Oh, oh, Zagar and Han and Horner. Refunds for free bailings. More money. Very negligible. I, I... <laughs> That, that's still free, free money. money. Uh, still free money. Why would you not say that's free money? 
Uh... Manx would be pretty good against like all the attack waves as long as someone else did the objective. So... Zagara. <laughs> Just buy launchers. Yeah, like if you get Manx to the mid game where, where he... Like if he did nothing until the mid game where he can power up, he'd be really strong anyways. He'd be really strong. Yeah. It's just that if you also have to contribute to like killing shuttles, then that's kind of hard because Sky Furies. So Zagara and Arturus are stronger than Statboy on his own? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Artanis Zagara. Mm. That's why they're in uh... S tier. I don't think that's even stronger than Karax on his own, to be honest. I'm actually just not. not... I, yeah. <laughs> now, now I'm thinking, does Karax not deserve to be an S? <laughs> Is that it only because of Immortals? Car no, Karax needs enough money. Whereas that's like true. the top four, you don't need that much money. That's that's true. That's true. There we go. All right. So I think that's going to be it for our tier list. Guys, watch Tutu's videos. I will link them down below. We'll see you guys next time.